When it comes to all-in-one displays that you can use for gaming productivity and streaming your favorite shows and movies, you'll likely see this option a lot when doing your research. This is LG's 42-inch C3 OLED EVO 4K TV, and today I'm gonna take you through the unboxing setup process, what I love about this display, where I think it could improve in future models, and why this is one of my absolute favorite recommendations to my family and friends when they're wanting to upgrade. With that said, let's go ahead and get into it. Unboxing this is fairly standard for a TV. The TV itself weighs only 21.6 pounds, but they still recommend two people when taking it out of the box, unlike what I do here. Included in the box, you get the TV, two legs with bolts and inserts, cable clips, quick start guide, a remote control with batteries, IR blaster, and a cover for the back. To put this together, all you need to do is screw in the legs and for the most part, it will be ready to go. The build of this is a super thin and compact body with a textured back and brushed metal edges keeping the design extremely clean. When it comes to ports, you get three USB-A ports, audio out port, four HDMI 2.1 ports with one of them being eARC supported, LAN port, optical audio out port, IR blaster port, and an antenna cable port. If you have a lot of cables and want to keep it clean, just attach the cover as well as take advantage of the clips and leg inserts to route the cables. Once you have it ready to go, next thing you'll want to do is go through the TV setup process by connecting it to your network and setting up your preferences. This is a straightforward process that you can always modify after you've completed the steps. The display is a 42-inch 4K Ultra HD screen with amazing color and contrast. It supports HDR content in Dolby Vision, HDR10, and HLG. Unlike a lot of external monitors, this LG C3 has a glossy finish rather than a matte finish, and I gotta say, I'm actually loving glossy way more than I thought I would. The screen is plenty bright and is excellent when it comes to viewing angles, so it's perfect for my office setup. A big pro to going with a 42 inch over a 55 inch screen is you get much more packed pixel density, making the picture much more sharp. Being an OLED means getting perfect blacks and extremely vibrant colors, which is exactly what I wanted to see when it came to gaming and the content that I stream. Speaking of gaming, let's get into what makes this absolutely ideal for gamers. To start off, as I mentioned before, you get four HDMI 2.1 ports, which is exactly what you want to see if you love gaming on your PS5 or Xbox Series X in order to get 4K at 120Hz. This display features 0.1 millisecond response time, which gives you a competitive edge when playing games like Call of Duty or Fortnite. It also supports VRR, AMD FreeSync Premium, and it's NVIDIA G-Sync compatible. Being that this TV was designed with gaming in mind, LG included their game optimizer mode that includes an easy access menu to modify and settings based on what game you're playing. Main areas I focus on out the gate is choosing the game genre that matches what I'm playing. In this case, I'll choose FPS for Call of Duty, but there are also options for role playing, real time strategy, and sports game. You can also customize everything to your liking. The other place I modify a lot is the game black level for games like Hogwarts Legacy that have dark environments and for Call of Duty to better see some of the darker skin campers. The size of this screen is also perfect for gaming. It's just big enough to have a more immersive feel, yet not too big that you feel like you're moving your head back and forth to see all the areas of the screen. Two areas for improvement with future models for this one, I would love to see them add a display port, especially for all the PC gamers that want to use this, especially if they don't have HDMI 2.1 ports on their PC. And the other area would be sound. It's not bad, but compared to everything else about the screen, the sound is the only just okay element. Here's just a small sample of what it sounds like. Ollivander always says, the wand chooses the wizard. Is that how he found this place? No, someone in his family knew about it. Again, it's decent enough, but this TV has set the bar so high in so many other areas, it wouldn't hurt to see a slight upgrade in the future. And honestly, if you're a gamer, you're likely wearing a headset or maybe using external speakers, so it's really not that big of a deal. Overall, the combination of vibrant colors, 120Hz display, low latency, and game optimization features will only increase your love for gaming. While a lot of it gives you a competitive advantage, it won't necessarily make you go pro. You need practice and I mean lots and lots of practice if you want to be good at games, trust me. 
Gaming is my top usage for this TV, but how does it perform when it comes to productivity? If you're big into desk setups, you've likely seen a trend of people starting to use 42 inch and 48 inch OLED TVs as their primary monitor. There's a lot of good reasons for this. From a desk setup perspective, aesthetically speaking, this is a big eye catcher due to the size, the thin body, and glossy finish. What makes it a great option is that it's a solid alternative to dual monitor setups due to the amount of screen real estate you get. When it comes to using a MacBook, I use the Magnet app as a way of splitting up the screen similar to how I'd use a dual monitor setup. Keep in mind this was created as a TV so it doesn't have everything you might get with high-end monitors, mainly being that there is no display port and no Thunderbolt ports. And because it is a large screen, you want to make sure that you have at least 30 inches between you and the screen. The stand is also not adjustable, which is why I typically recommend mounting this. You can do this by either wall mounting it or getting a desk mount that can handle the weight. Just keep in mind that this is a 300 by 200 base mount, so you'll likely need to get a mounting adapter with it. The main complaint that you'll see on the internet with this OLED is because burn-in is something OLEDs have had issues with in the past, LG implemented features to prevent it. One of which is an auto dimming feature, especially when you have a lot of white screen. So far this has been amazing to work with as an external monitor, I've primarily been using it for video editing, researching, and writing. Displays like this are awesome for video editing due to the amount of horizontal room to spread out the timeline, and then you have all that vertical space to increase the size of the video and editing platform. Outside of gaming and productivity, this is also a smart TV and it only adds to the value of the display. Their WebOS smart TV platform gives you the ability to stream 4K movies and TV shows using the most popular streaming apps that you'd expect to see, such as Netflix, Max, Disney+, Apple TV, and many others. It also supports Apple AirPlay, making it incredibly easy for me to push content from my phone to the TV. You also get LG Channels, which gives you access to 300 plus subscription-free channels. So who exactly is this TV for, and is it right for you? If you're big into gaming, but prefer something bigger than a 27 inch or 32 inch screen, it's for you. It's also for you if you want something to take full advantage of either your PS5 or Xbox Series X, as it can get 4K at 120Hz performance. If you're looking for something that's an all-in-one solution for either your desk setup, your dorm room, bedroom, where you can use it for gaming, smart TV, and also as an external monitor, it's probably for you. Overall, it's an absolutely stunning piece of tech that I personally think you will love, especially if you've never had an OLED before. And I wasn't joking earlier when I said that this is something I recommend to family and friends, but with that said, it's just my opinion. So I'd love to hear what you all prefer down in the comments and anything else I should cover in the future. If you liked today's video, be sure to like and subscribe. I'll leave links to everything down in the description, including everything included in my desk setup that you may have seen in this video. With that said, I'll see you all next time.